Good afternoon. Yeah? Okay. So the study that I'm uh, presenting today is a part of a big research uh, project, a, lo a longitudinal study that was a, um, I have to read, uh, that followed the children diagnosed with ASD from toddlerhood to adolescence to examine outcomes. The study was uh, conducted and led by uh, Professor uh, Ben Yitzchak that is sitting here with us and uh, Professor Tzachor that was with us uh, before. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you, okay. And uh, Professor Etzachor. Um, and as part of the follow-up study, uh, we also explored the characteristics that possibly relate to social competence. Social uh, relationships are fundamental human activity that positively affects development and quality of life. Considering the known social difficulties of children and adolescents with ASD, they may be particularly at risk of experiencing challenges in these crucial social relationships. Given the, importance of uh, given the importance, previous studies have examined the ability of youth with ASD to establish social relationships. Overall studies indicate that uh, cognitively able children are able to make friends. In addition, uh, studies have shown that there are similarities in developmental pattern of friendship, in friendship expectation, and most important in the desire to have friends. Nevertheless, studies have also shown that friendship characteristics of children with ASD differ from match TD children. Studies uh, of children with ASD that were initiated in early childhood and they um, it followed social development over time are scarce. One study that was conducted by uh, Freeman <coughs> and his colleagues examined variables in toddlerhood associated with later friendship quality and found that early core social communicative abilities such as um, joint attention and play skills were um, uh, linked to further fr uh, friendship quality at age eight and nine. This long-term follow-up study examined for the first time social relationship competence in young adolescents diagnosed with ASD in toddlerhood. Our study had the two aims. Our first aim was to compare developmental trajectories in cognitive ability, autism severity, and adaptive skills of adolescents diagnosed with ASD at toddlerhood who achieved better social relationship competence to those who did not. And our second aim was to compare verbal abilities, social participation, friendship qualities, and educational placement among adolescents with ASD who achieved higher and lower social relationship competence. So of the original cohort that uh, included 69 adolescents, uh, only 43 participated in our study. Our inclusion uh, criterion was having sufficient verbal abilities to complete the uh, questionnaire that follow up. So only adolescents that were uh, evaluated by, by uh, modular three and four at follow up were enrolled to our study. As you can see, 43, uh, 43 adolescents uh, fulfilled this criteria and they were all uh, diagnosed at a very young age. Sessions were held with each participant at two time points during toddlerhood when they were diagnosed and at follow-up, which was about uh, 13 years later. Uh, during those uh, sessions, uh, participants uh, underwent comprehensive assessment that uh, examined their ASD symptom severity their cognitive ability and their adaptive behavior skills. In addition, at time two, um, adolescents were asked if they had a friend and if they identified a friend, they were asked to fill the friendship uh, quality scale. It's an assessment that the child uh, reports about his uh, relationship with a friend. And their uh, parents were asked to fill a parent's questionnaire that uh, elicits information about their adolescent. Of the parents questionnaire, only three parts were used for uh, the current study. The, third pa the first part related to the uh, adolescent's uh, friendship status. Parents were asked whether their child had at least one stable friendship. The second part uh, related to their, uh, the adolescent's social participation. Parents were asked uh, how frequently their child meets with friends after school and what is the level of assistance he needs in order to participate in social activities like going to peer, peers' birthdays, going to youth movement, or 
uh, any other activity that is uh, after school. Um, and the third part uh, related to the uh, uh, adolescent educational uh, uh, placement. Parents were asked uh, to report their adolescent school or last uh, educational placement. Of note, uh, in our study, adolescents attended either uh, mainstream, mainstream classes with or without assistance, or uh, they, went, they attained the special education classes in mainstream schools. For the purpose of uh, the study, we constructed a social relationship competence uh, construct uh, score. Uh, our construct score was uh, based on the three uh, criteria. The first one was the adolescent's report, uh, whether he has a friend or not. The second one was the parent's report regarding whether they think that their uh, child has a, a friend or not. And the third one was uh, the adolescent social insights. This criterion was uh, determined from the ethos item, insights into typical social situation in a relationship where the, um, during the evaluation, the uh, child, the adolescents to uh, give examples of, uh, uh, of uh, insights on the social relationship and the uh, social uh, situations. So uh, participants that uh, fulfilled all uh, three criteria, uh, they said they had a friend, they nominated a friend, their parents said they had a friend, and they have shown higher social insights during the ADOS evaluation were assigned to the higher social relationship competence group. And in this group, we had 19 uh, adolescents. And adolescents that did not fulfill all three criteria were assigned to the lower social relationship competence group. And in this group, we had 24 uh, adolescents. Um, so uh, looking at the results, uh, we saw that uh, at time one at uh, toddlerhood, there wasn't a, differ a difference between the two groups in their uh, autism severity, their adaptive skills, and their cognitive ability. But what we wanted to, to know at what uh, changes occur until uh, by adolescence years. So first, we looked at the ADOS um, uh, social affect uh, severity scores. And uh, as you can see in the figure, examining the differences between time one and time two for each group separately revealed for the low, lower social relationship competence group a significant increase in the ADOS, in the ADOS social affect calibrated severity score from time one to time two, compared to no significant difference among, among the higher social relationship competence group while the higher social relationship competence group maintained their social affect symptoms level over time, the social affect symptoms level for the lower social relationship group became more severe. Looking at the ADOS RLB scores, we saw that um, uh, there was a significant decrease in the symptom severity from time one to time two for the lower social relationship competence group indicating that participants in the lower social relationship competence group improved in their RRB symptoms by follow-up. You can see that there was also um, decrease for the higher social relationship competence group, but the differences were not uh, significant. Next, we looked at the adaptive behavior skills. Now, overall in our study, participants in both groups improved their adaptive skills for the communicative, the social, and the daily living uh, domains. But for um, social skills and daily living skills, we found a group uh, time interaction. Um, while both, um, when we compared the um, scores between time one and time two, uh, we saw that uh, uh, although both groups improved their scores, the improvement for the adolescents in, in the higher social relationship competence group were more robust. And the same goes for the daily living skills. Comparing the time one, time two scores, uh, we saw that the changes for the higher social relationship competence group were bigger compared to the lower social relationship competence group. Now, this uh, is a very positive result. Although uh, adolescents with higher social relationship competence uh, maintained their um, ASD a social uh, symptom severity, they were able to acquire social skills during their childhood years 
and they substantially improve their social affinity. Looking at the cognitive uh, ability, we did not find a statistical difference between IQ scores at time one and time two for the higher social relationship competence group and for the lower social relationship competence group. This finding emphasizes the notion that among individuals with ASD, difficulties forming social relationships stem from innate social difficulties beyond the contribution of a level of cognition. Uh, our second aim was to compare uh, the group's ability during adolescence. And we looked at their verbal ability, their social participation, their friend friendship quality, and their uh, educational placement. So first we looked at their, uh, verbal, uh, their verbal abilities. We compared the um, IQ scores between the groups and found a significant di difference. Adolescents in the higher social relationship competence group had better comprehension, sc comprehension scores compared to adolescents in the lower social relationship competence group. And next we looked at the social participation and again we found a good difference. The higher social relationship competence group was more active and socially independent. They visited friends uh, after school more frequently and needed less assistance to participate in, so in social settings compared to the lower social relationship competence group. Now, um, previous uh, studies have shown that uh, social participation and uh, uh, daily living skills are uh, uh, associated. Daily living skills relate to a wide range of behaviors and skills required for self-care and participation in community activities and important for developing independence. Indeed, in our study, we saw that adolescents that had better daily living skills and were more independent were also more socially active and socially independent. Taken together, we suggest that acquiring daily living skills in various domains enable and facilitate participation in social and community activities and that both form the foundation for developing social relationship competence. And next, we compared the, the groups for their friendship uh, quality. Most of our participants uh, completed the FQS scores. Um, and uh, we compared the groups and the quality of the identified friendship and found a significant difference and found no significant difference between the two groups on their FQS score. Now, this finding was uh, rather surprising. A self-reported friendship quality didn't differ between adolescents with ASD who had higher and lower social relationship competence level. We hypothesized that this finding reflects the gap between the learned definition of friendship and its meaning that is taught during years of intervention. Adolescents with sufficient language abilities may use this knowledge in completing a questionnaire on friendship, even if they don't actually know how to use this information in practice in their, uh, in their daily lives. The difference between knowing something and doing something. Our last comparison uh, was related to participant educational settings at a, a follow-up. The groups did not differ in their educational settings. Adolescents with higher social relationship competence attended main school and special education classes to the same extent as did ad adolescents with lower social relationship competence. Contrary to the belief that mainstream classes can offer more opportunities for forming friendship, in this study, social relationship competence was unrelated to the adolescent educational setting. It is possible that each uh, educational setting has unique benefits that support children's specific needs, abilities, and learning styles, as well as help children develop competent interactions and even friendship. The most important thing is to match the, chil the child's needs to the appropriate uh, educational setting. <coughs> to sum up, our first aim was to compare developmental trajectories between the two groups. Our main, aim, uh, main finding indicates that while in toddlerhood there was no difference in IQ, ASD symptom severity, and adaptive behaviors between the two groups, years later at follow-up, significantly different trajectories were apparent between the two groups. For adolescents with ASD and higher social relationship competence, 
Their developmental trajectory included consistent autism social communication symptom severity over time and better social and daily living adaptive skill trajectories, trajectories at follow-up. For adolescents with ASD and lower social relationship <coughs> competence, their developmental trajectory included elevation of social affect symptoms and more modest social and daily living adaptive skill trajectories at follow-up. Our findings indicate the changes related to social communication, daily living adaptive skills, and verbal abilities are the most important factors associated with outcomes in social competence. In contrast, changes related to cognitive growth and RLD have less impact on outcomes in social competence. I'm finishing. Our uh, study also has some in, uh, clinical implications. First, clinicians should be aware that even when ASD symptoms are severe in early childhood, some children improve in social communication skills over the years, translating into better social outcomes. And regarding interventions, we suggest that in addition to working on social skills, interventions should also focus on teaching independent skills and improving language abilities, as these serve as a key mean for advancing in social interactions. And uh, regarding educational placement, it is important to know that adolescents with ASD can develop social relationship competence regardless of their educational placement, whether mainstream or special education. <laughs>